Hey friends, I am so excited to have you guys back for week five of our fun science online. This week we are doing everything with pirates. It's gonna be amazing. We are gonna build ships. We're gonna light up a lighthouse. We are gonna learn about density and how things float or sink, which is gonna be really, really fun. And we're gonna do it so with some great activities. If you're new, my name is Dr. Erica. I am so excited that you're joining us. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and that you get our notifications so you know when we're live. And you should be getting emails in your inbox if you signed up for Patreon, and that will come with everything you need to know for like any printouts, a big deal if you're doing it offline. I'll do some of the stuff, and if you have questions when you're doing it offline, you can always email me those questions. And if you want a shout out, you can type it in the comments box and Evan will give me our shout outs in just a moment. But first, I wanna go through what we're gonna need for our project today. So our main project, we're gonna make an awesome calm jar. So you're gonna need the jar that you're gonna make it in and you definitely want it to have some sort of a lid. Um, so if you don't have that quite yet, you can make it in something and we can pour it into that later. You're gonna need some alcohol. We did have a parent email that alcohol, they were running out of their alcohol and they asked about vodka and vodka should work. I looked up the density of vodka. I think it will work for you guys. It'll just be a little bit less water to get your effect in place. So if you don't have alcohol, you should be able to use vodka. But if you're one of the people using vodka, definitely let us know about that. It should, scientifically, it should work. Um, you're gonna need some water to do it, and then you need some oil. And I just have vegetable oil. It needs to be an oil that's liquid at room temperature. And if you're using vodka, you probably want to use like a vegetable oil or a baby oil might work even better if you have that, because that's even less dense. And if you want to color your orbs, you can try. There's two things that you can do to try to color your orbs. Both items, I'm just gonna say it up front, will sort of color your water over time. So just be prepared for that. But if you want your orbs to try to color, you could use either acrylic paint that we can mix in or candy color. So if you happen to have candy color from dyeing your Easter eggs, that would also work. But this is different than the food dyes, like gel food dyes I think should actually work in oil, but it's different than the liquid drop food dyes that you normally might have in your baking cabinet. So that is what you're gonna need this week. And then I just have some other stuff over here for a little experiment we're gonna do together in just a minute after we do our shout outs. Alrighty, so let's do some science. And the first thing that I have here on the table, which you might've noticed, I'm super excited about our pond, our local pond has tadpoles. And in about like four or five weeks, we're actually gonna do sort of a life sciences unit where we're gonna make bug hotels and we will learn about life cycles and all of that jazz. But tadpoles actually take a really long time to grow. And if you happen to find some in your local pond, you could take a few of your tadpoles and you could put them in a jar and you can feed them boiled dandelions. However, if you don't have local tadpoles, please do not go online and buy a tadpole growing kit because those tadpoles are actually an invasive species. I think they're like a certain type of bullfrog and they will actually kill off the other natural habitat frogs we have. So frogs are an indicator species. That means they tell us about what our ecosystem is doing and whether or not they're healthy or not healthy tells us a lot about our environment. So we don't want to introduce something that will sort of mess that up. So we took, we only took a few of the tadpoles that were there um, and we will watch them. They are also a big responsibility if you decide, if you find like a pond that on your walk and it's like close by to your house um, and you see that there's tadpoles, you could take a few they are gonna take about two months. So it's gonna be two months of care or so, but you will get to see it. But we're gonna do it here. So if you don't have that, we are gonna do it here um, to help with that, yeah. There's also some concern about if how many die. Take yes, yes. Yeah. So if you take a ton from the wild and then a bunch die, that's really, really bad, obviously. Um, we only took like, I don't know how many we took. Um, but we didn't take a lot and actually like something, there's a, there's a large proportion that actually die when they're very, very little. And then you do want out of this like five to eight that we have, we're going to want to make sure that probably like four to seven of them survive, which actually last time we did this, we only had one tadpole of our five pass away. 
Um, and then when you release them, if you do do this and you do release them, please make sure that you release them at the same place that you got them. That helps to make sure. And if you're going to grow them with us, you just want to wash your hands, make sure that they are disease free. Um, but it, they're really easy to grow other than the fact that they're super dirty animals and they, you just have to feed them all the time of their dandelions, but we are going to get to see it. So if you don't want to do this whole thing and have all that responsibility, we will see it because we are going to keep these little tadpoles for you guys to learn about the life cycle. What's all that other stuff floating around? Yeah. So there's all these other little, like, they look like teeny tiny rice things that are sort of popping around. Those are my least favorite insect on the planet mosquitoes. Um, but tadpoles like to eat mosquito larvae. So that's why anytime I change their water, I actually add a cup of, or two of pond water. I go down to the pond and grab some water too, to add that in. Um, and they, there's like little tiny algae in here that they'll be eating. They eat a lot. It's kind of amazing. And we have some really little ones. And then we have the big one, which we're going to call, I don't know, our family hasn't voted on it, but it's going to be like tiny something. Where's our big one? He's, He's down, down here. So you can see how much they're going to grow. I don't there's, know if you can. one next to them. That's, yeah, I got it. it yeah, um, that they're going to grow. And we will get to see them develop their legs. And we will get to see them have their legs pop out and their tails go away. And we will get to see them turn into frogs, which is so much fun. It's an awesome life cycle thing. We actually have also a woolly bear caterpillar that Isabella found recently. And we are going to try to raise that. Caterpillars are different. If you do want to see a life cycle of a caterpillar, you can totally order those online. They make painted lady butterflies and they are super easy to do. Um, and they are non-invasive. You don't have to worry about hurting the ecosystem with those. Just please do not order a tadpole online because those ones are an invasive species. Same thing with ladybugs. If you're looking at life cycle things, sounds awesome to grow a ladybug, but if you order it online, the one that you actually get is an invasive beetle that's the grouchy ladybug is like the really mean grouchy one. Whereas our, and I, should, I shouldn't say our anymore because now we have people from all over the world, but the ones in our region are actually very like gentle and kind. So we do want to make sure that we think about our ecosystem as we do that, but we will watch these guys grow and we're actually going to 3d print some lily pads for them to hang out in as well. And I'm really excited about that. I'm excited to watch these guys get bigger. So that is our, First thing, they will be joining us every day. Maybe not every day, but many days they will join us. We had a couple right. questions come Ooh, up. Yeah. Um, can we use chilled canola oil? For is chilled alcohol? canola oil? Yeah, yeah, because that's, that's still a liquid. liquid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then is white rum okay? Yeah. Any alcohol, I think, should be okay. Oh, and we we're going to check on witch hazel. If you want to do a Google search on the density of witch hazel, we'll find out whether or not we can use that. All right, so today we are talking about density and density is really important about how things float or sink. So there's always this joke that we like to give people and we're like, what weighs more, a pound of bricks or a pound of feathers? And everybody's like, ooh, a pound of bricks. And we're like, ha ha, gotcha. A pound is a pound, which is true. A pound of bricks and a pound of feathers do weigh the same. However, they don't look the same. So a pound of bricks might actually be just like a half of a brick. It might be like this big. Whereas a pound of feathers might take up like a whole big box, like this big. So if we looked at the volume of a pound of bricks, it might be small. And if we looked at the volume of a pound of feathers, this is a big box here. So when we look at that and we say, ooh, the brick is way more dense because all of its stuff is so close together. It's really heavy and really small at the same time. Whereas the feathers are less dense because they takes up a lot of space. So density is sort of like how much does it weigh with how much space it has. So like how much does a cup full of brick weigh versus a cup full of feathers? And then anybody would be like, oh, of course the brick weighs more because a cup of bricks and a cup of feathers, we can look at it and we know, ooh, brick, that much brick is really heavy for its size. And that for its size is what makes it density, which is exactly what we want. And density isn't just things like, we don't need to look at just things like wood or glass or bricks or feathers. We can also look at liquids. And the cool thing about looking at densities for liquids is the really dense liquids will be sort of at the bottom. And as it gets less and less dense, it will go towards the top. And it's almost like this way, we could do that with air, because helium is less dense than air. 
helium balloons go up. And the same thing is gonna happen here. Liquids that are less dense than the other liquids are gonna go up and they're gonna reside on the surface. So one of the things that you could do if you wanted to, you don't have to do this with me right now, we're gonna make this project, but I just wanna give you like a hands-on showing of density. You guys have this awesome printout that's supplementary. And it asks you, it gives you a list of different densities and you can cut them out and you would put the most dense item at the bottom. So just like we would imagine if we dropped bricks through a big vat of feathers, the bricks would go towards the bottom and the feathers would be towards the top. So the really dense liquids would be at the bottom and the less dense liquids would be at the top. And you can actually make something other than just cutting and pasting and comparing those numbers, we could make something. So I have a little column that I'm gonna make into a density column. And I have some corn syrup. Now corn syrup is like basically a little bit of water and a whole lot of sugar. That is why corn syrup tastes delicious. All that sugar. Now I dyed my corn syrup red, mainly because on this sheet, corn syrup was red. And something that's less dense than corn syrup, but still really thick, is actually dish soap. So dish soap has a little bit more water, it's a little less dense, more liquidy. But if I pour it down the edge, it's gonna sit right on top of that corn syrup, which is really cool. And that's because the corn syrup is more dense than the dish soap. And it's just gonna sit right on top, it's really thick. I could add some water in here. So if I add some water, water is sort of a, what we call like a, usually a pretty neutral density. Um, it's like one gram. And we can, ooh, that's gonna be tricky to see because we've got blue and green. Let's see, it wasn't light enough. I'm not sure if we can see the difference. There is, we see this layer here pretty easily and there is a layer right here too from that dish soap and then water. Um, but it's a little tricky. I guess you can kind of see. Can you guys see that it's like lighter up here and then it goes darker, which is where my green dish soap is? Yeah, awesome. And so something that's less dense than water is alcohol. So you can put some alcohol in here. Zoop. Just like this. And the alcohol is going to sit on the surface of that water. Apparently all of my colors are too dark but I think you guys can see it, which is really cool. And I can also add in some oil and see where the oil sits. And what's really interesting is you might notice the oil is going, is sinking inside that alcohol, but it's sitting on top of the water. Ooh, which is exactly what we want for our project. So the oil is more dense than the rubbing alcohol because the rubbing alcohol floated on the oil, but it is less dense than the water, which is down here. And that's because water is really good at packing up really nicely. It packs up and it is really dense. There's a lot of water molecules for every little piece that you look at. Whereas oil molecules are really, really big. And those guys create sort of a lot of gaps between them. They can't clump together and get as close as they want to get to. So by not being able to do that, they have all this extra space. And so, they weigh less for each unit. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could weigh like a cup of oil and a cup of water. And the cup of oil, think it in your head, would it weigh more or less than a cup of water? Hmm, more or less than a cup of water. And here, if we look at the density, we would wanna think, well, it's on top of the water, so it has to be lighter than the water for every unit. So the oil should weigh less than a cup of water, which is something that you can do. So this is a really fun experiment. If you wanted to do this at home, you can totally do this in your kitchen. You can use Google and you can look up all sorts of things. Like baby oil has a different density than vegetable oil. So baby oil and vegetable oil will separate and you'll get layers. You could do molasses, you could do honey. You could even actually do this with all different amounts of sugar water. So you could take like a little cup full of water, and you can line up your little cupfuls of water, and you could add in a tablespoon, and then two tablespoons, three tablespoons, and mix it up. You'll notice the water, it will still turn into liquid, right? 
But that water now is all that water plus the weight of that sugar. So it gets more dense, the more sugar. And you can actually dye your sugar waters and create a density column that looks just like this, which is really cool. So our project today, our calm jar, is really going to use this right here. The fact that oil sits on top of water but sinks in alcohol. And we're going to use that to make oil actually float, which is going to be really, really fun. Oh, and I had these other little guys. Density is not just things of liquids. We talked about solids too. So I have like a little teeny tiny ball bearing. It's like a little teeny tiny metal guy and you could drop that in and we could watch it. Woo, it went straight to the bottom. It is sitting at the bottom right here. And we could take something that is maybe less dense than that. So metal is very dense. For every ball of metal, it's very heavy. But a ball of Lego might not be as heavy. We could actually look at that and we could, ooh, it's almost, ooh, it's, it's hanging out. It looks like, oh, we've lost it actually. It's somewhere in our soap. All right, so that actually we can learn our Lego is less dense than metal. It's somewhere hanging out in our soap. And you might be able to find something that actually floats on the oil. So it might actually be up here at this surface or something that we know floats on water like a little piece of wood we would imagine would fall through the rubbing alcohol and would float on the water. Although maybe wood floats on rubbing alcohol. I don't know the answer to that. We could do a test someday. All right, so let's make our project now that we know a little bit about densities. So I'm gonna take my jar and I'm gonna fill it about a third of the way with alcohol. So if you have a little tiny jar, you're gonna use less alcohol if you don't want to use too much alcohol, we just won't fill our jar up, no big deal. All right, so I'm gonna add about maybe that much to mine. And then I'm gonna add a few drops of oil. And what do you guys think will happen to my drops of oil in the alcohol? And we can look over here for the answer. The alcohol is the purple one. So we have alcohol, and then we have oil, and then we have water down here. So we have these three. So I just put in the alcohol, so the question is, where will the oil go? Hmm. Will it float or sink on that alcohol? I want you to think of the answer and then you'll find it out. Right. Now let's take a look. So if I put some oil in, it went straight to the bottom. It's just sitting on this bottom as a bunch of little spheres. And when we did our edible Orbeez project, we learned, oop, down, we learned that it makes those spheres because it want like, Oils and waters, they don't really like each other and they want to like have the least amount of oil particles exposed to something that likes water. So they sort of all clump together. And if you clump together in a group, the tightest you can get is sort of in a circle in two dimensions, but a sphere in three dimensions. So we have all these little spheres of oil. Now, if you wanted to color your oil, what you can do, and I'll show you the two ways. One of them is to use a little bit of paint so you could take some oil and put it in a little cup and add in a tiny bit of paint. So if I add in just a little bit of paint, let's see here, just a little bit of paint. And you gotta mix it up really, really good. Now the paint isn't actually gonna go into the oil. It's gonna sort of like make this like hue on the outside of the oil bubble. So you wanna just really get this paint as mixed up as possible. And we're gonna keep mixing. You gotta mix really hard. You gotta get the, like, all that paint chopped up into the tiniest pieces you can. And I'm using acrylic paint. Watercolor paint would not work for this because watercolor paint will happily go and be in the water. Acrylic paint is an oil-based paint and it does not like water very much. And so it should stay for the most part in the oil, but will also sort of go into the water over time. All right, so I have like all these teeny tiny little pieces of oil in here. And if I also now take this oil and I just drop some of it in like this, I will get some sort of blue hued oil drops in here, which will be really cool later. And another way, if you happen to have it that you could color it, is you could take a little bit of oil and if you happen to have candy color, 
you could add a tiny bit of candy color. And candy color is actually made specifically to go into things like chocolates. Chocolates are very high in oil. So you can add in a little bit. You don't need too much. A little bit goes a long ways here. And again, this would not work for traditional food coloring because that's like water-based food coloring. So we can add a little bit of this and we can change the color. And if you wanted it darker, you could go a little darker. I'm just gonna stick with light green. And this will, for the most part, stick in the oil, but of course, over time, it will go into the water. But we can add a few drops of that and I can get some sort of green bubbles in there if I do it like that. All right, now you might be saying, Dr. Erica, how does this teach us anything about density? Because nothing is happening and it does not look like a calm jar. We're gonna add some water and water and alcohol love each other. They will mix together and as we mix them together, we're kind of making the water less dense, but we're also making the oil more dense. And we learned that water would sit right down at the bottom here, right? And the oil would come up. So if we mix it just right, we can make it so that the oil doesn't sink, which is called negative buoyancy, and so the oil doesn't float, which is called positive buoyancy. We can make it so the oil just hangs out, which is called neutral buoyancy. So I can just do that by adding some water in. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of water and we see that our bubbles come up and over time they will probably settle right back down. In fact, I'm watching it happen. I'm seeing all the big bubbles are kind of going down, which tells me I need to do a little bit more water, which is fine. Now, if you're doing vodka, the amount of water you put in is probably gonna be less than what we're putting in here. All right, but we wanna find the spot where these bigger balls sort of all float together. And the little tiny oil balls that I have in here right now, they will slowly come and find their friends and then pop into those little tiny groups. And if you wanna get less of those, what you can do is you can add your oil sort of down to the side of our glass. And we can still wait. And now I see that, ooh, the bottom is almost up. It's sort of floating here. I have this nice little layer of oil bubbles that are floating inside the water. Now they're not floating in the sense that they're floating on top. So they don't have a positive buoyancy and they're not sinking like we're used to. They don't have a negative buoyancy. They're pretty neutral, which is pretty cool. Oh, here we go. We're gonna go like this too. So you can kind of see these guys, I'll put the lid on. Where did I put my lid? Like this. So you can kind of see how they're just hanging out right there. And you might, you could give it like a gentle swirl to make sure your water and your um, alcohol are mixed together so that you don't have something like resting on necessarily a surface. But now we have all these awesome little oil bubbles that we can watch float around. And it's really fun to watch this float and it can be really calming because you can sort of just watch the waves go in, which is really cool to do. Or you can try to make it spin and it will spin around, which is really handy. And also I think really fun. Um, if you find you put too much water in and maybe we'll do that together so if yours are floating, don't do anything. I wanna show you guys what will happen if we put too much water in. And you can think in your head, where will the oil go if I add too much water in? So if we add in a lot more water, let's see what's happening to our oil as we add more water. You might notice I went from sort of being down here to having my oil bubbles be up here. In fact, if I add more water, and I dilute the density of that alcohol. So I'm increasing the density of the liquid the oil's floating in, and now my oil is all at the surface. If you happen to add too much water, you'll find it's all at the surface. You might be like, oh man, I ruined my experiment. You didn't, don't worry about it. You can totally make your liquid less dense by adding something that is less dense than this, which happens to be the alcohol. So I could add in some extra alcohol if I added in too much water. And I could make these oil guys come down a little bit. And how much I need will just sort of depend on how much water I had put in. So you just wanna add it nice and slow as we go. 
And over time, those oil guys will start to go from a positive buoyancy of being on that surface and floating to having a neutral buoyancy and being sort of in the middle, just sort of hanging out. I'm gonna stir this maybe with a toothpick right now. I'll just make sure we're stirred. We're not hanging out on some water. But let's add a little bit more. And of course I'm making all these sort of teeny tiny alcohol blobs right now. Um, because I'm squirting it in. You can also ask, add more oil, like oil blobs. Later. Yes, we could add more oil blobs later too, which will look really cool. We'll do that too. Let's get this guy. Maybe I added way too much water. Oh, they're coming down a little bit. Let's see. We have more. I have like so much of these random things. It's like amazing. We're gonna add some more alcohol in. See, these, they are starting to come down some. Um, so we'll add a little bit more. We have some so questions. More. So yeah. we, we have, some people have said they didn't Ooh, have paint. Go. That's okay. You don't have to paint them. And you'll notice like the paint, I mean, I can see the paint, but it's not like a huge thing. It's really hard to color oil. We could color the water, but then the oil is inside the water. So it doesn't really... It's tricky. Um, yeah, I call it tricky. So then we have somebody, um, Kaya, said that they want to try and compare room temperature alcohol to cold alcohol. Ooh, yes, a great way to do that, Kaya, would be to make your jar and then close it, put it in the fridge and see. Like I would maybe mark where is my oil hanging out at and then put it in the fridge and see if the oil floats up or if it sinks down. But then you're actually comparing two things. You're sort of comparing how the density of water changes with temperature and how the density of oil changes with temperature. But we do know that the density of water goes down as it turns into ice. And that's why ice floats on water, which is really handy because if ice did not float on water, like we would not have fish. I mean, every time you were in a pond and the pond froze over, that ice would sink to the bottom and it would like be this huge cascade and the fish would basically die. So it would be terrible. It's a good thing that ice floats on water and is less dense. So your water would be changing density as is your oil. So tricky. Uh, so sort of then back. we um, said, oh, hi, Vinatia. Hello, Vinatia. Bernard and Barbara, or Leonard and Barbara from France said, why didn't the water mix with the alcohol in the first test tube with the colors? Oh, yes. So here it didn't mix. These, all of them except for the oil could mix together. They are all hydrophilic, which means they love water, but none of them are mixing together because their densities are so different. So at the little boundary where sort of my dish soap and my water meet or where the water and the rubbing alcohol did meet, there was a mixing with the water. And in fact, we can kind of see it if we could get a close up somehow. Let me put this behind it. Um, you can kind of see there is like a purple layer of, of liquid right below that oil. And that is the rubbing alcohol that has started to mix with the water and is then more dense than the oil. So that is happening. And also down here, we also have some a situation where some of the green is seeping into that water because the water is slowly eating away at that dish soap and diluting it. Um, and over time, some of this density, it will all sort of smear together. Not the oil, because the oil is hydrophobic, which means it has a fear of water. Um, but the other pieces that are hydrophilic will slowly mix together. Yeah, great question, Bernard. Who is it, Bernard and? Uh, Leonard and Barbara. Leonard and Barbara, wow, I messed that up, sorry. Leonard and Barbara. Great questions. Yeah, those are awesome. Beautiful. And I did add in at the end after I had found out the perfect density for the solution where the oil bubbles just sort of hang out. I added in a few more drips and they're like really big oil bubbles, which are my favorite. I love them. And then Griffin can, Oh, hi Griffin. We can just do this and you've got this awesome little calm down jar. It looks almost like a Milky Way galaxy with like these huge 
stars hanging out. It's really fun to just watch it move. And you don't need colors to have the fun with it. Some of the blue ones are there, but see, my water is like sort of now milky, and that's because some of the dyes from the paint are coming off into the water. It just, that's what it ends up doing. Water is really good at finding ways to get into things unless it's like a fat or an oil. So it will just always do that, but it looks really cool. I'm a big fan. And that is our project today. Now tomorrow we are also going to look at some stuff that's very similar to this, except for we're gonna use air bubbles and we're gonna change the size of the air bubble to make something sink or float, which is really cool. And to do that, you will need a plastic bottle, one that you can see through and can squeeze. So glass will not work for tomorrow's project. I actually had to go and make sure I added a special thing to my list to make sure I had a, some plastic bottles. One liter bottle, two liter bottle, anything. It just needs to be a plastic bottle with a screw top cap that you can squeeze, which will be really important for tomorrow. But if we don't have other questions, if we do have other questions, we'll get to them in a second. And if not, we're gonna open up our Zoom classroom and you guys can show us your awesome projects. Like this is looking so cool. Um, and you can show us your projects. You can have lunch with us. You can just hang out. It'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm gonna add actually, as we double check on our questions, I'm gonna add some more coloring to this because why not? I'm gonna make it really green. Why not? I'm gonna say, why not? We'll see how well the food, the candy coloring actually stays in to it. So I added more to the green and that's oil. So I use that candy coloring. Let's see what it looks like when I drop it in. Boop. Ooh, that looks cool. Can you explain the Zoom classroom for people Love who are it. first here? Yes, so if you haven't joined us before, on our Patreon page, we have a link to a Zoom classroom, which has a password in it. And you can click on that link, it opens up, you know, sometimes actually while we're doing the talk, but then that's our place where everybody can come and share their projects and see sort of what we're doing. You can have lunch, you can ask questions. It's just a lot of fun to hang out. And that actually, that candy coloring, oh man, that did a good job. Candy, that's better than the other one. I know, and I'm oh, oh, sorry, I do wanna say, you might notice that the green candy colored ones are lower than all the others. Curious if anybody has an idea why. Mm. This is like a little mini that? quiz. A little density column that we made. If you go wash it out, you can make one. Can you make those candy ones swirl a little bit? Like can I make the candy ones swirl a little bit? Can I make that one? Yeah, Georgia. You can make this one in our Zoom classroom. Let's see. Can we make them swirl? Shoot. There they go. We'll have to watch how the candy sort of goes into the water over time. I'm noticing my water's already turning a little bit green. And there's spots, there's streaks now that they're moving. We have streaks going on in our water, which is cool to look at, though. Like tracking the way they go. They're like kind of like comets with little streaky dye tails. They are definitely leaching into our water, though. So our water will turn green. That's super cool. But it does look cool. It's actually really cool right now to have like these little yeah. comet tails trailing around. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up here so we can go to our Zoom classroom. I wanna say thank you so much for joining us for science today. It was awesome. I cannot wait to continue our fun buoyancy and pirate week with you guys. Tomorrow we're gonna make submarines and we could even, if you have like extra little treasures around your house, I'll show you how to turn it into a game where you can try to recover as much treasure as you want, which will be fun. And then Wednesday, we're gonna have a shipbuilding challenge. Thursday, what are we doing Thursday? Hmm. Uh, hmm. Oh, Thursday, we're going on a treasure hunt. We're gonna learn how to add vectors together, which is awesome. This is something that you like will learn in high school, but it'll be way better in high school now because you'll have this fun treasure hunt and you'll like already know it. It'll be great. And then Friday, we're making little light up lighthouses, which will be so fun. It's gonna be awesome. And next week, we're doing the solar system. It's gonna be fun. I am so excited we have all these families with us. Make sure that you share our message and share our page with your friends and come and do science with us. And we will see you over in our Zoom classroom and like maybe like give us like a few minutes because we always like a little technical switchover. But we'll see you soon. Have a good one. <laughs>